Ever since the Steam Deck was revealed, it was inevitable that it was gonna get compared to what is currently the most popular handheld on the market, the Nintendo Switch. And one term that's kind of made its way around, sometimes jokingly and sometimes all entirely too seriously, is calling it the Nintendo Switch killer. Now, personally, the comparison has never really made that much sense in my own head. I get why it happens, because the Switch is, again, the biggest handheld on the market right now, and so the Steam Deck is something that's offering an alternative to that. But really, in my own head, these are two very different devices that are targeted targeting ultimately very different audiences and do different things aside from the kind of core concept of, yeah, they're gaming devices. But you know what? I love handhelds. I've been using the Switch nonstop ever since it came out and I've been messing with my Steam Deck the last few weeks. And so let's talk about it. Let's really kind of weigh what these experiences are like side by side and how I feel about it. There's a lot to cover about these systems, but I think a good place to start is the physical design of these two and just how they operate as handhelds, because I think this is some of the most interesting areas for sort of direct comparison. And it's one area that honestly, I actually like the Steam Deck a lot for. When looking at the size and shape of these systems, there's a lot of benefits to be gained from the kind of extra large size that the Steam Deck has gone for, and there's a lot of benefits to going to the kind of super small portable design that the Switch Lite targets. And the Switch OLED and regular Switch kind of just doesn't have the strengths of either of those. If you've watched my channel for a while, you know that I absolutely love the Switch Lite. And if it wasn't for certain feature trade-offs like the ability to dock and now the OLED display in the Switch OLED, I would still be using a Switch Lite as my main system today because the added portability of its smaller size really does make a big difference to me, especially if you have some of the kind of clamshell case designs for it. It's so easy to just throw in a bag and take up minimal space. It's awesome. And the regular Switch, while not massive in size by comparison, does past a certain threshold point where I think it isn't really the same level of portability that the Switch Lite can afford. Meanwhile, the Steam Deck, while being huge compared to the other systems, really leads into this bigger body design, which comes with a few very important additional upgrades. The biggest of which, comfort. This is something that's been complained about with the Switch a lot, where oftentimes people find themselves having to buy special grip designs or buying third-party Joy-Con designs in order to make for a larger, more comfortable grip to use the system over long periods of time. Nintendo's focused approach on the flat body design of the Switch does make it a more portable system, but again, I feel like it's still large enough that it's not really getting the benefits that, say, the Switch Lite offers. And the Steam Deck's grip shape and size just really illustrates the benefits of just embracing that kind of larger size that, yeah, you can still carry around in a bag. You're probably going to want to use a carrying case. It's never going to be the kind of system that you can conveniently fit in a pocket, but ultimately it's still travel ready and something you can play on the go a lot longer without hand pain. Ultimately, there are solutions to kind of get that increased comfort on the Switch. Again, there are already so many popular options out there, but just having a system that right out of the box is way more comfortable to use is really nice and kind of makes me wish that Nintendo maybe would consider some kind of Switch XL approach. Now, while I do find the grip of the Steam Deck to be a lot more comfortable, there is one part of it that's still throwing me off and some of this is definitely a bit down to personal preference and habits. I still don't really love the button layout. It works fine, but I find myself oftentimes really getting confused for a split second because I expect my thumbs to move one way to reach for something that isn't actually there. Namely, when it comes to the orientation of where these sticks and buttons match and the addition of the touchpads on the Steam Deck. The vast majority of controller interfaces out there feature a D-pad and stick, as well as a stick and button layout that are relatively one above the other. They might be offset certain different ways, there might be a little more left and right, but ultimately there is a noticeable height difference going on. Whereas on the Steam Deck, these things are now side by side with touchpads taking up the bottom area instead. And in a void, this isn't that uncomfortable of a setup, but years of using so many other controllers that rely on that kind of more traditional layout does cause a lot of kind of bad habits to form where whenever I'm using my Steam Deck, I'm basically always going to the touchpad first, expecting to use D-pad controls and nope, that's the touchpad. And in some games that works out okay. And in other games, those don't do the same thing at all. And yeah, that's a problem. Next up, I want to talk about visuals, and this is the situation where you just have to immediately address the elephant in the room of, yes, the Steam Deck is a much, much more powerful system. There is something to be said for those games that are designed specifically for the Switch and leverage the power just the right way and have art styles that aren't necessarily as super demanding, but when we're going to compare a lot of games that are running on both systems, yeah, the Steam Deck version is ultimately just going to be a better looking game. It's a much more powerful system that can render out better visuals, and in games that are running similar visuals, the Steam Deck is going to be hitting higher frame rates more easily. And ultimately, this all ties into the argument again of how I think that while ultimately these are both handheld gaming systems, they are targeting very different things. It's still important to note that for those games that are available on both, the Steam Deck is 
going to make them run better. However, something else I think is worth pointing out that as far as the displays go, especially when it comes to the Switch OLED, what gameplay is being rendered out and shown here looks a lot better on the go with the OLED. The OLED display simply affords a better way of showing what the system is capable of in terms of how bright colors can get, the vibrancy, the contrast. It ultimately is just honestly a flat out better looking display than the one currently on the Steam Deck. Even the regular Switch's display when side by side with the Steam Deck, ultimately again, the Steam Deck is going to be able to render out more beautiful looking stuff. But if you're looking at games that are playing roughly the same, the lights and colors and contrast on the regular Switch do end up looking a little bit better still. This isn't to say that the Steam Deck display is awful, it's just fine. It gets the job done with the regular Switch edging it out just a little bit and the Switch OLED display showing a clear advantage. A situation where these roles are reversed though and not something that I actually put a lot of thought into until I started using these systems is audio quality. When it comes to max volume, they're roughly about the same. I was noticing in some games the Steam Deck was able to kind of edge out the Switch OLED and be a little louder while using certain media apps they sounded more or less about the same max. However, where there's a major difference is the clarity of the audio. Some of this comes down to the fact that some Switch versions of games might just be a little more compressed and thus are pushing out more compressed audio. But when doing more even tests like say streaming different television shows or YouTube videos, ultimately the audio coming out of the Steam Deck was noticeably clearer than what was on the Switch OLED. As soon as I thought about directly comparing these two, the first game that came to mind that I wanted to jump right away into is Hades because I absolutely love all the music in Supergiant Games titles. I think Darren Corb does an amazing job. And while the music in the game sounds fine coming out of the Switch OLED, the music is just so much cleaner on the Steam Deck and ultimately sounds a lot better. Now, of course, if you're the type to use headphones with your system really often, this might not matter as much. But if you rely on just the audio directly coming out of the system for most of your gameplay, honestly, I feel like audio is something that people are becoming more and more aware of in terms of its importance and how it shapes the gaming experience. And while the OLED one still sounds fine, the Steam Deck is winning out in that category. Now, those are the things that I think you can more easily directly compare between these two systems. The body shape, the displays, the audio. But when it comes down to the actual long-term experience of playing on both these systems, I think it really does highlight how ultimately they are different. Yes, these are both handheld gaming machines, but it's introducing a kind of comparative market that hasn't existed in handhelds before, which is basically the old school PC versus console debate. The situations aren't the exact same, and I think Valve is really working towards trying to make the Steam Deck something that is closer to feeling like a more native traditional handheld experience. But a lot of things that I've noticed in my time playing on these two systems is how much it really does have in common with the kind of arguments I've seen in the past for why people like to play on a PC versus a dedicated game gaming console like the Xbox or PS5. And a lot of it boils down to intuitiveness and simplicity. This is something I talked a lot about in my first video on the Steam Deck where really the biggest thing that I think makes it an awkward experience for some people is that the Steam Deck does not have its own ecosystem built around it. Rather, it is doing its best to adapt a pre-existing one and put it in handheld form. And while ultimately it's able to do a lot of things really well, there's always these kind of surprise little extra hoops you have to jump through or things you have to figure out that wouldn't necessarily exist in a more kind of pre-planned out, fully baked device. Want to play a certain game on your Switch? Go out and buy a physical copy, pop it in the system, you're good to go. Or download something from the eShop and play it right away. Steam Deck, you want to play something there? Well, navigate through the store, double check its compatibility rating. If it's not verified, see what the specific eccentricities and weird things that might happen are, and then load it up and maybe still have to figure out a little bit how exactly the control scheme works out. Want to watch a YouTube video? Well, just download the app on the Switch and launch that and go from there. Steam Deck, reboot in desktop mode, open up the browser, navigate to YouTube, and then kind of just mess with the onboard controls if you're not actually docking it and using it with a plugged in keyboard. Ultimately, the Steam Deck does all the same things really well, and in a lot of cases will run games more beautifully than what the Switch is able to do as well. But you're oftentimes gonna also get those situations where games aren't verified or don't work super well yet, and even when they do, you might run in just this little bit of extra friction for how everything works compared to how a traditional gaming handheld or gaming console would do it. And this is how everything kind of mirrors that PC gaming versus console mentality. Sure, the Steam Deck as of right now doesn't have the same kind of variety of what kind of graphics cards and hardware it's gonna be running off of, but in terms of the general experience, there's always just that little bit of extra work you put into certain things to make them work that for some people isn't a big deal and for others is kind of frustrating. On top of all this, also look at the price difference, right? The most expensive Switch is $50 cheaper than the cheapest Steam Deck, both offering the same storage at 64 gigs with the Steam Deck being a lot more powerful and offering much more expensive 
expensive, but also way higher storage options that also switch over to an SSD. In terms of performance per dollar, you're getting quite a bit more out of that Steam Deck, but the entryway into the Switch, as far as just even going for the cheapest bottle, like a Switch Lite at only 200 bucks, makes it something that's a much easier grab for people when they're just looking for a gaming console, especially for something as a gift. As things are right now, the kind of main feeling that comes across is that the Nintendo Switch is ultimately still the much larger crowd pleaser in the sense that it has these identifiable big name first party brands like Mario and Zelda, and there's a lower introductory cost and ultimately it is a simpler experience to use. But the Steam Deck, for those who know what they're doing and really want to embrace getting these kind of bigger experiences on a handheld to go, really is a great first attempt from Valve. And I think one of the things that really stands out about the two is it's a first attempt. I talked about this in my first video where there are constant OS updates that are going on for the system that are adding brand new features that are rebalancing and fixing all the little different eccentricities that the system has. And it is ultimately an experience that is just getting better and better all the time. In my mind, it is still not a direct competitor in the Switch, not in terms of how well they're able to do, but just in terms of who they're targeting ultimately. But with more work put into this, with other models potentially in the future and the more changes and updates that happen to make a more kind of overall cohesive system, I'm really excited to see what can happen in terms of Nintendo really finally getting some heavy competition in the handheld market. You know, for a while there were other companies trying to make stuff like Sony with the Vita, and then we had that weird lull where everyone thought handheld gaming was dead and mobile was gonna be the future, and a lot of other companies kind of backed out. And since the release of the Switch, that's changed. We're seeing a whole lot more renewed interest in handheld gaming. More companies are coming out with this. Steam is doing this, and you know, fingers crossed, who knows, maybe someday Sony even changes their mind and tries to do a PSP3. And it's that kind of competition that I really hope inspires these companies to make bigger and better changes that ultimately is better for the players. So those are my thoughts on the Steam Deck and the Switch. Honestly, they're both just great experiences. And as a fan of handheld gaming, I just can't believe we're actually kind of in this phase now where we're seeing more options pop up and I can't wait to see where it goes from here. Uh, as always, if you enjoyed the video, hit the like button to let me know. If you didn't like it, let me know that as well. Just because you guys can't see the ratio doesn't mean I can't. It's always good for me to know. Subscribe if you haven't yet. I got more stuff planned on the way for Steam Deck, Switch, and other gaming systems. And I'll see you guys later.